time you are. Yep. All right. Uh, being the first large city in the U.S. to implement all LED street lighting, what attracted you to the LED technology? Well, the whole idea that you could change out the light systems and save resources, basically energy, but also save taxpayer money. And the unique thing about it, it, it had a you know obviously lower glare, which was important. Um, you one thing you see in Alaska is you want to enjoy the night light, you know, light and sky. And our light systems that we had for decades really just glared out everything. You couldn't see a lot, and obviously they were inefficient. Uh, they were high cost and uh, cost the taxpayer a lot of money. Um, were there specific benefits? I know you mentioned the night sky was incredibly yeah. important on the savings. Um, but, you know, specific savings you wanted to achieve by retrofitting to LED street lighting, other than what you mentioned? Well, our goal was originally, you know, we thought, okay, if we can convert these. There's a couple things you said. One is labor costs because you don't have to change them as often. Two, um, the direct energy costs. And our goal was 30 40% savings we were hoping to get, which people didn't believe we could even get that. And then when we started to install them now, literally a year later, they're achieving 50 upwards to 60 percent savings in hard dollar savings. So that's not, uh, you know, just kind of a, a, an avoidance cost. It's real money that taxpayers are no longer paying. The other piece, as I mentioned, that whole idea of a night sky. Uh, now you have direct light down where it needs to go, rather than all over the place, not in your back window of your house, but actually down on the street or on the sidewalk, which the public really enjoys. So, so that, that was your main motivation to yeah. implement. That's right. Save money and make sure at the same time that it worked for the neighborhood. Because one of the pieces that we wanted to make sure was, let's make sure that the customer, the end person, the end user, appreciates the light. Because you can sit there with a lot of tech books and have great technology. Then you install it, and what happens? People go, "Well, that doesn't work because it's too dark or too doesn't direct doesn't do the directional light like you." So we spent the time to really involve the community, help us figure out the right lighting. And then when we did the, the, the community, is very, very excited about it. I mean, I know right outside my house in Anchorage, uh, you know, I drive down that main drag, and there it is, the LED lighting, and I like it in the winter. Um, before you took your U.S. Senate seat, uh, were you able to experience or actualize you know, any of the benefits that Anchorage had seen? Um, I, I guess you probably see that now more as a resident, that you still have your home there. That's right. Than as a, but are there any specific well, things? You, yeah, partially, because I mean, we had started, you know, we started the project just as I was uh, moving from the mayor's office. So we had started some of it already in the fall and just before. And you could, you know, obviously visually see it, but you didn't have a full season, is what I call the calculation of the savings. Now, a year later, you really see it. Uh, I know members or friends of mine who are on the city assembly tell me now how much they're saving. And that's why the number, you know, well, like I said, we said 30%, maybe if we get 40, we'll be very happy. People never believed we'd even see, you know, 20% level of 10%. So here we are, 50, 60% in savings on the cost of energy is huge. We spend a lot of money because uh, we have a lot more uh, uh, dark time in the winter, obviously, than most cities. So our lights are illuminated for much longer periods of time. Um, do you feel you have taken a leadership position with regards to green initiatives? I know you spoke a little bit um, at the last plenary session. Right. Um, on the local level, uh, are you able to establish a connection between the local and the federal levels of government with your experience with this efficient technology? I think it's it's starting to happen. I will say that it's hard for the U.S. Senate to really understand. Like the mayors here really talk about it. They're passionate about it. They and It's because they're literally changing the bulbs. I mean, they're really doing the work. So they they understand the value of it. And translating it up to the Senate is always a difficult challenge. Now, saying that, for the first time uh, last week, I heard a U.S. Senator on the floor of the Senate literally reading through the U.S. Conference of Mayors' book of successes in regards to climate change, energy savings. And so they were actually, one after another, mentioning the city, mentioning the mayor, mentioning the city. And I thought, now they finally have gotten it. Yes. And my hope is obviously to spread that. Every meeting that I participate in, when we're talking energy, I use experiences from when I was mayor. Because what is difficult for the U.S. Senate at times is to make that connection. They put this money into something and they wonder kind of what happened. So if I can help them make that connection, I believe that more resources will come to do more of this kind of energy efficient technology, which is fairly abundant but not highly utilized as we should be. Have you noticed a lot of your Senate colleagues um, really look to you because you, you were Anchorage, you implemented 
this LED technology, among other things there, do they really look to you as a source? I think what they find is that, because they've heard it so much, that mm -hmm. as a former mayor, I always <laughs> kind of start with that. Um, <clears throat> they recognize, I can give examples, so a lot of the organizations that come to Washington, D.C., we're kind of first on their list to try to what's the next, how do they move through this pathway of the U.S. Senate and on their, on their ideas, especially around lighting technology. And so senators do you know, I talk about climate change or energy because Alaska is kind of this unique state. We not only have renewable, we have non-renewable, and then we're doing all these efficiency projects. And so they get to, you get to kind of lay it out. So I'm able to help kind of deliver that message that maybe they hadn't had for a long time. Um, what advice would you give mayors who are interested in implementing LED technology for their municipalities? Uh, don't be afraid of it. Involve your community. In other words, don't just have the technicians tell you. Because we had a real struggle with uh, going through our uh, kind of bureaucratic process of public works who are used to the old model. I mean, if you look at even the federal regulations, uh, they really don't recognize this new technology. As we had to really rewrite our code or our regulation in order to allow this new technology to come in. So what mayors will find, that first meeting they have with their public works people, they'll say, well, we can't do that, and I never heard of that. How are you going to do those many bulbs? And you go through this whole explanation. But just be a very uh, persistent about it and show to, the, to your community how much you'll save in dollars. Once you do that, the community will be with you solid. But engage them from the beginning. Do you know the savings are? Engage them, help them select the light code, like we did. We actually had them out looking at the light pictures as they were installed. And they were able to say, oh, we like this because it doesn't have as much play or it's more efficient. So engage them and work with your public works people and be very persistent and patient with them. Because once they embrace it at that level, they'll make it happen throughout your whole city. Um, what type of feedback have you received about the LED street lighting, um, of course, before you left again, and then um, now that you're a resident there in Anchorage? Right. Uh, have you been notified of any kind of technical issues or problems or anything like that? You know, I think you don't hear, um, I don't hear all those details at this level now when I was mayor, obviously we did, but one of the things I know people are always wanting to know is, do our standards, especially new subdivisions, are they going to meet this standard now? tried to set that up before we left. So far we think it's working that the new developments are incorporating these. The biggest thing I think uh, people are always worried when they hear about these uh, lights being put in, are they going to be able to see it for their kids? That's kind of one of the things you hear. Once they're installed, people then have a, a very positive attitude. But they're, I think that's still, even though it's not a technical issue, it's more of a community fear of, you know, why are you changing out these big glaring lights that, you know, basically light up the whole city, why not, and then we try to explain this directional lighting, why it's more beneficial. Uh, I think that's it. Some of the newer technology where you can work off of the reflection of the snow and the light, a lot of that has not fully developed in our city. I think that's a new potential. We'll have some challenges with it, I think. Have, um, and I know this is probably going back to when you were mayor again, um, I believe it's the street and park maintenance division. Right. Who are in charge of doing the snow removal? Um, did they enjoy it? Did they did they like that better light? Was it easier to do their job? I mean, better see. Yeah, I think in the parks and rec department, that has the plow off days and, and uh, street maintenance has to do the, the plowing on the streets. It is actually right there. Mm -hmm. It's more a you know, defined area rather than these glare lights, as I used to call them. You know, they were where, where is the trail? Where is the these directions are really defined where you're going. And especially because uh, they're a white light, which is a very crisp color. And I, I think so far we hear good things, but you know, they're, they're adjusting. You know, it's, it's not like they're so used to it lit up like daylight you know, in the night. And really what, what they had to get adjusted to is you don't need the light 20 feet off the trail. You need to light the trail. And so that's a, an adjustment they had to go through because they were so used to it literally look like daytime in some of these areas with the, with the high intensity lights that were blowing everywhere. So that was an adjustment. But now they kind of really, you see the trail. It's very defined. Thank you very much, Senator Thank you very much. Thank you.